One of the nicest go-to computerized telescopes is the Celestra Nexstar SE. In this case we have the 6 inch model but all of them work virtually the same way just with a little more aperture on the 8 inch and down to the 4 inch which also works very nice as a great go-to telescope. And uh, you can see on the computerized hand controller once you get it set up uh, you can have the telescope go to whatever object that you select in the sky for that particular evening. Uh, it's a great scope for using as well during the daytime and we're going to be focusing on our neighbor's barn about one mile away here to the west and uh, show you how this telescope works. One of the things that uh, you'll undoubtedly want with the telescope is the optional lens shade. Because the corrector plate on the Nexstar SEs and all Schmidt Cassegrain scopes is exposed to the elements, we like to be able to put on the lens shade to be able to just protect that from dew and dust and uh, stray light. So the, uh, the dew shield just basically fits onto the front of the telescope and that will protect it uh, generally from most of the dew and the frost that is going to form in the evening. So um, it's just a, a matter of being able to uh, enter in the objects that you would like in the hand controller. We have an uh, entire video about the setup and alignment because there can be some uh, tricky steps in getting it aligned. So uh, we offer that free of charge if you purchase the telescope through All Star Telescope as well. But uh, for today we're just wanting to show how the, uh, the telescope works and uh, being able to take a look through at uh, something during the daytime in the distance. There's a red dot finder that one will use uh, to get an approximate uh, direction for the telescope. So in this particular case we're going to put that red dot uh, pointing towards the neighbor's barn over there. And there we have uh, a view from a mile away. And here we have the evening Saturn setting just shortly after sunset but we can still catch it in a little bit of that evening uh, sunlight and we see it just up here uh, between these clouds we'll be firing over there with the uh, telescope momentarily. And if we zoom out again and then we look directly to our west we can uh, see Venus which is uh, almost setting there as uh, it's heading down into the clouds and into the sunset. And we have our next star SE all set up here to be able to take a look at uh, both Saturn and Venus. One of the beauties of the next star SE and the Celestron Go 2 scopes are being able to set it up so that it will find and then track the object as the Earth spins and the objects move across the sky. So we've done our alignment uh, using the procedure in the other video about setting up your next star SE and uh, we've focused on Saturn which is out there in the uh, southwestern sky this evening on this beautiful uh, evening and uh, all we have to do is use the hand controller then to, uh, to scroll down to uh, uh, the other objects and I'm going to set it on the moon, hit the enter key and off the telescope goes to know uh, to find the moon. It knows uh, where all of these objects are because we've started with the one object and based on the time, date and location we're able to, the telescope is able to tell us where to go for all the other objects. And we have a full moon tonight and so our telescope is, uh, is pointing over there towards the full moon. There's uh, several thousand objects in the hand controller and so uh, from the moon we can choose uh, deep sky objects and uh, for example named objects come up in the Andromeda Galaxy and from there hit the enter key and again the telescope knows where to go this time up in the northeast in order to find the Andromeda Galaxy. And then as, uh, as it finds the object the motors continue to turn very slowly to be able to track that object as it moves across the sky. So that's the, the beauty of the Nexstar SE and the other go-to telescopes. We're going to next uh, show you how to attach a camera, a single lens reflex camera to this particular telescope. 
In order to attach a single lens reflex camera like the Canon 60DA or other SLRs, uh, it's a very simple process. One will begin by removing the visual back, diagonal and eyepiece from the back of the telescope. And that just can unscrew all as one unit. Although there are three pieces there. We'll set those aside. The next thing that we'll do is we'll attach uh, the schmidt cassegrain photo adapter to the back of the telescope where the visual back would have been. And then secondly we need to attach uh, a, the T-ring. Uh, depending on which model of camera you have, this is a Canon. If you have a Nikon you'll need to buy the Nikon T-ring rather than the Canon. And we'll attach that onto the uh, schmidt cassegrain photo adapter. And once we've done that, remove the lens from your SLR, keep it covered to keep the dust out, and then we'll attach the SLR and then do the, our final tightening. We can adjust the orientation of the camera by loosening off the, the back, so if it was in this direction or loosen that off and go in this particular direction. What we'll end up doing is having to refocus this and uh, initially to do that uh, we look through the viewfinder, get it fairly close, and then if you have a live view on your camera you can uh, also do the live view and then do a fine focus with it. So there we have uh, on our live view a picture of uh, that barn that's about a mile away off in the distance. If we want to do really fine focus on it uh, we can zoom in just a little bit and, and do that. You'll have to adjust your ISO and shutter speed using manual settings in order to be able to take a picture because there's no aperture adjustment. So there we've, uh, we've taken a picture and uh, we were shooting at one uh, 2,500th of a second at an ISO speed of uh, 320 in order to get that picture which is properly exposed. You'll have to play with that until you get the, the right exposures. But that's uh, the simplicity of being able to uh, take pictures through your telescope during uh, the daytime. And then likewise at night you can take pictures of the moon, of uh, some double stars and star clusters as well. So that uh, gives you a good idea at least of the, the setup of that particular telescope. So here we have our uh, next star SE looking up here at the, uh, the mountains in beautiful Kananaskis country out to the west of Calgary and uh, we can look at what's happening right up on the top of those mountain peaks as uh, we put in the 25 millimeter eyepiece into the uh, Celestron Nexstar 6 SE. Okay, as you're able to see now we've attached a Canon single lens reflex camera. We've taken off the visual back, the diagonal and the eyepiece and in its place we've uh, put a T-ring on the Canon camera and then a Schmidt Cassegrain photo adapter. So this, in effect, uh, gives you a telephoto lens that's 1500 millimeters in length, which is... And here's the pictures through the next star 6SE of the mountain range in Kananaska country, just west of Calgary. With the scope set up in the evening and a beautiful full moon, we're going to take a picture of the moon on the Canon 60DA. It has the same size sensor as the other Canon you'll be able to see the size of a photo of the moon. Pretty much fills up the entire frame of the camera. And so that's what you can expect to get with a normal Canon SLR camera picture of the moon. Okay, so uh, what we've got now is a Canon uh, 5D Mark II, and it's got the full frame sensor on it. And so you'll notice uh, immediately that the uh, entire moon is able to be captured because uh, it's getting a much wider field of view here. So we're going to try a couple of different shots on this one and just sort of show you what the full-size sensor will, uh, will appear. And here's the capture of the moon on the 5D Mark II, the larger sensor, and comparing again to the 60DA, the smaller sensor, what you can expect.